We're live. Oh, hold on one second. We're live? We are. Okay. Ready? Let's go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Insecurity. Tonight, we have a great topic on hand. We want to discuss the cost of security, whether that's the cost of implementing security or the worst case scenario, the cost of the backlash with security. So again, I'm Haim Cohen and we are joined by Tom Webster. Howdy. So this came to light when this actually brought up to my mind a few years ago when LinkedIn was hacked and um, eHarm or Match.com and Last.fm, they were hacked and we talk, we hear about it, okay we're hacked, now what? Then when Target came on and now they're being federally investigated, people are talking about it. I asked Tom, what is truly the cost of all this? Because it has to cost something. Right, and in a lot of the cost, in the first step is preventing a data leak or a security breach like we've been seeing with a lot of high profile companies this week. Um, a lot of the cost is either paying developers to make sure your application is secure, paying penetration testers to you know bash on it and hammer away at the thing, hammer away at your physical security, your, your point of sale systems, your web application, whatever you have that has important customer details in it, you've got to pay someone to hammer on it, test it, try to break it, try to find the holes that you don't see readily available. And then you've got to pay someone to fix it. And, you know, whether that's buying expensive firewall products, whether that's paying a developer or a team of IT guys to come in and secure everything, there's a whole lot of money that goes into making security a priority. And unfortunately, you just don't see it with most companies. Well, I mean, it goes back to, I almost want to say, can we just buy insurance for this to happen? I mean, like, it's it's hard to convince someone, and we've heard this, it's hard to convince your boss that they need to spend lots of money that really gets no gain, right? There's no front, like, facing gain. Right. The uh, a, a lot of companies will say, so, so take the companies that are really security conscious, and that's their business model. So take LastPass, Spider Oak, Carbonite, any of the big guys that, you know, put encryption in the forefront. They say, look, we're going to keep your data safe. That's our entire job. We're going to do this to the very best of our ability, and you can trust us because security is our number one priority. Uh, and you see those guys garner a large portion of the security conscious market. You see, you know, the big tech guys using Spider Oak and LastPass and, you know, all these great services, but unfortunately, that's a very, very small market. It's a very small chunk of, uh, of people that can shop your store. So instead of Target saying, hey, all you security guys, we're going to make sure our point of sale systems are completely unhackable, which, I mean, they can't realistically do that. Everything's hackable at some point. But they're going to say, we're going to make sure it's as secure as humanly possible, and you should shop here being a security guy. No, they, that's not worth the money. That's not their target audience. It's not really even part of their demographic that they pay attention to. Instead, they're going to concentrate on, you know, what do we have in the store? What's on sale? We've got lower prices than store a, uh, ABC over there. And that'll bring in more customers. And you really don't see security come into the forefront until there's a backlash, until something terrible happens. And then everyone starts paying attention for about a week, and then they forget about it. So I, I guess to the average person, you know what? As long as it doesn't affect me, I really don't care about this. So we take the Target example. If you shop, the initial story is you shop from Target between Black Friday or Thanksgiving night through sometime the week before Christmas, and a hackers downloaded all the, the entire database, all the credit cards, at least that's what we thought. So Target issued a statement that said, hey, you know what? Um, we're going to offer you a free year of credit monitoring service. So everyone took that, said whatever, okay, we're going to take this. And that was it. Everyone's like was mad that they, their credit card companies issued them a new credit card proactively because at least Target told people. But I don't think it really hurt anybody. It definitely hurt the people that had all the automatic bill pays. Now they had to change. But other than that, it really wasn't an inconvenience until probably later. But so far, right. right, that that's the only inconvenience, the fact that you got a new shiny credit card? 
Yeah, so, so currently, yes, that's the only bad thing that's happened is you have to change your credit card numbers everywhere. You've got to reset up automatic bill pay. You've got to save a new, a, a new card on your electric bill company or your gas bill company to do your automatic payments with. And right now, that's the only bad thing that's happened. Um, because Target, and we have to give them credit for this because not enough people do, Target came out and they said, hey, guys, we got hacked. And, you know, that's a big thing for a company to do. That's really important, and you don't see enough people do it. Lots of companies get hacked. An incredible number of companies get hacked every day, but most of them don't have the integrity to come out and say, look, I mean, we got owned, and it, it's just that simple. I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do about it now, but this happened, and we lost your data, and we apologize. And really, we've got to give it to Target. They came out and said it. It's not like a bunch of people looked at their credit card statement and went, wait, what are all these charges from from Madrid or from Spain? I, I didn't shop at a department store in Spain. Uh, I mean, they didn't wait till something horrible like that happened. They came right out and said it. They were very responsible, and... They could have given more information. We're still waiting on more information about how this happened, but I'm sure they're still investigating themselves. So we'll have to wait and see. But you know, the, the real danger comes later. The real danger comes when it's not the credit card numbers. It's the personally identifiable information. It's you're going to – anyone who was breached, you're going to start getting more spam or you're going to start getting more targeted phishing attacks. Imagine if Target said, hey, look – or you got an email claiming to be from Target and it said, hey, look, we're sorry about this. Due to a class action lawsuit, put in your, you know, go to this website, put in your bank account number and routing number and all your details into this website, and we'll give you 200 bucks to say we're sorry because a, a court is forcing us to. A lot of people would do that. A lot of people would say, oh, wait, no, no, this totally looks legitimate. And they would throw in their information. Or... You know, they would get calls from people claiming to be from, you know, target security trying to fish them for information. It makes targeted attacks and just, just spear phishing attacks really, really easy. And it's not exactly spear phishing because you're not targeting one dude that you want to get. It's you're targeting a bunch of people who are really easy to target because you've got this giant list of information. You've got their rap sheet right there. And you can automatically see, you know, where they live their phone number, their email address, age, whatever Target was collecting, these people now have and can and will use against you in the future. Well, I was going to say exactly. You're going to see in about a you're going to see after the the lawyers figure it out, there will be a class action lawsuit. There will be a thing contacting you and and that that's a whole other topic where we get these class action lawsuits not nowhere in the mail again, but Please click on this. Go to this website and put your social security number in just to verify you. And I, I can't tell if any of these are real or fake, so I just don't do it. And then I'm yes, I'll be out like ten bucks, whatever you're going to win from any class action lawsuit. Mm -hmm. But you're out of that money, and it just it, it hurts me because I really do want that ten dollars here and the ten dollars there. That's but, that's a lot of double cheeseburgers. Exactly, and and it's like. I got one from Facebook about two years ago. AT&T had one for something. And you look at it. Apparently, I got one the other day from PNC Bank Art Center uh, from um, Live Agent who price gouges on, the, on concerts. But again, who knows how legitimate they are. And it only hurts the, people, the advocacy groups trying to really go with class, class action. But yes... I I wanted I do want to give Target credit, but I also have a think they had a responsibility because the last thing they want is for Amex or for Visa or for Mastercard to drop them, and now they're going back to only taking cash. That would destroy their business. So I bet you they gave a heads up, and and because all the credit card companies proactively canceled all the credit cards. Right. Or or even I'm not sure if this is you know worse than that because that is. Huge if a credit card processor drops you and says, "Hey, look, you're a risk. We we can't take that. We can't do business with you anymore." I mean, that's gigantic. That hurts their bottom line substantially. I mean, imagine going to Target or going to any store and any place you walk into, and they say, "Oh, sorry, cash only. We don't take cards." Like, really? I mean, is this like the 1960s? Come on, come on, really? Um, you're gonna go buy your big screen TV. Hold on, let me get my pennies out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, in, I mean, it, it is better than, you know, people shopping at Target and everyone saying, hey, 
I'm trying to figure out why there are all these weird charges on my credit card. Oh, you got weird charges? I got weird charges too. Wait a minute. Where have you been shopping? Well, where have you been shopping? And the internet, people on the internet have got this funny ability to take any situation with any amount of weirdness, piece it together, and figure out exactly what's going on very, very quickly. Within about, you know, two weeks to a month, you would see if that started happening, you know, people linking it back to Target. And all of a sudden, people say, wait, I can't shop at Target now. They're stealing my credit card because they would automatically go to the worst case scenario and Target is stealing your credit card for corporate po profits or something. I don't, I mean, you know, insert something here. It would be a giant conspiracy theory and it would freak enough people out that they would lose business. Well, what I really like, and, and what I mean is I don't really want to say that I wish any bad upon Target or anybody else. I, all those people that did lose credit cards and everything, it's not great. But at least it brought some 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 sense into some people to say, hey, wait a second. I don't shop on the internet because I'm afraid of this. But now I'm gonna sh I now I can't shop on Target because it's it's all connected. It may get those people that are afraid of the internet to say, hey, maybe I should look at this. And it'll get the people who are going around just willy nilly giving out their credit card to say, hey, wait a second. Let's take a step back. I think it brought two camps together. The one that are is afraid of everything and they got hacked, and you got the people who are just too careless, and they got hacked. And I don't know what that exactly means, but I, but I love telling people, oh, you won't shop on the internet? Well, how about shopping at Target? Well, I can't do that either. So then they end up, well, I'm going back to cash. Okay, you go back to cash. Right, and, and sometimes, sometimes it doesn't matter where you shop, uh, because sometimes all it takes is, uh, you know, someone making a credit card and doing some, uh, like, actually making a credit card, printing something on a magnetic strip, swiping it, doing the verification code, and they say, oh my god, this one works, it works. And then going out and spending a bunch of money, hoping they don't trip any, uh, any automatic shutoff systems or any automatic security systems that will kill a card, um, because those exist and they're really cool. Um, You're going to say the but, most famous one? The, uh, yeah. the two, the two. So the most famous, the fastest way to kill a credit card is to fill up your tank of gas twice and buy a pair of shoes. Right, right. Exactly. In that day, very close together. If you do that, you will kill a credit card instantaneously. So I, uh, I was actually the subject of one of these, uh, or the victim, I guess, of one of these. Uh, card copiers. They don't necessarily have to have your card, they just run a bunch of numbers and hope one works. Um, but there was a department store in Spain and they said, uh, my bank called me at 9 in the morning and I had like gone out to, I think the last place we ate was like a, a wing place or something. And uh, they called me in the morning and they said, hey, uh, Mr. Webster, can you tell me the last time you used your credit card? I said, yeah, I went out to dinner last night. Okay, in the Ohio area? Yeah, I said, yeah, yeah, it's, you know, Dayton, right down the street. And I gave him the name of the place. I said, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, you didn't go to Spain between then and now, did you? <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, I didn't. They said, okay, well, it shows a $500 charge here. We're going to cancel your card and overnight you won. Uh, yeah, don't use that anymore. It's been compromised. So, oh, well, cool. Um, so those automatic checks and balances are there, and uh, they do work most of the time. But you know, keep an eye out on your statement, especially if you shop at Target. Well, now we hear that Neiman Marcus got hacked. I mean, we're hearing that all these brick and mortar places are now having issues, and they have a completely different problem than people on the internet with internet security. But nevertheless, you're still putting your trust into into one of these places, whether it is a brick and mortar store, whether it is internet, and you have to focus on, so you can't stop what happens after you swipe the card. What you can do is stop, is prevent, prevent the activity from happening. So yes, you went to Target, you lost it. The first thing, like you said, you should do is now you got to figure out what's tied to that credit card. You have to figure out, now you have to monitor your statements. If they sent you the one year, uh, what's it called, credit monitoring service, you have to use it. Which my next question to you is, do those work, the credit monitoring services? You know, I I hate to actually give an answer that people will go by because I, I got so burned. 
Um, so I was involved in one of these things. One of a, a company lost my information, and uh, they said, "Okay, well here, here, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna give you. Oh no, it was uh, it was Sony during the big uh, Sony hacks that Anonymous was doing, and Sony lost. I had recently got a PlayStation Three. They lost everyone's uh, personally identifiable information. They said, "Okay, here, here. I'll tell you what. Just take this year of credit monitoring and." Uh, We'll call it even, right? I'll give you a couple free games. Just like, yeah, fine, whatever. This is a pain, but, you know, I didn't lose any money. I just lost some time. That's fine. Um, and then after I got it, you know, I went out and I changed banks that month. I rented an apartment. I got a loan for a car. I bought said car. And uh, not once during this year of free credit monitoring, and I was signed up on the site and everything, not once did that company call me and say, hey, is this actually you? And they're supposed to call you anytime something hits your credit report. And I can guarantee you buying a car hits your credit report. So I, I got burned on it. Whether they work or not should be up to your judgment. But honestly, the biggest thing you can do is, you know, Look at your yearly credit report. If you have to, go to go to the three companies online, request your report, take a look at it every year. I would get it, you know, company A in the first third of the year, then company B, then company C. Spread it out so you can see all of it. Um, and then, you know, keep an eye on your statements. Make sure nothing's hitting your credit. Make sure no one, nothing's delinquent that you don't know about. I mean... Yeah, I guess it could help having a company do it, but it didn't work for me. Luckily, I didn't get burned by it, but the company, in my opinion, was useless. And that's just one of them, right? There's a ton of them out there. Well, what, I was, what I was telling people, and I have no basis whether this is true or not, but all these companies are giving you one year of free service, but you have to sign up by a certain date. What I feel like, since this is so publicly known, is that they're going to wait that one year and then a year later start their attacks. So if it's wait till March, you have until March whatever, 15th, I would sign up on March 15th, give you that little extra couple months to do it. I've been burned. Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield is the state uh, health care provider. They lost... 900,000, 1 million of the public union people, and I'm a part of that, so I lost my information there. So I now have to sign up for this. I haven't signed up yet because I'm going to do exactly what it said, wait wait till the deadline and then go. But again, it's one of those. And see, then it goes back to the cost. How much does this cost, Target, Horizon, Blue Cross, Sony? And then I think about it now. I don't think that costs them anything. I bet you these credit monitoring services are jumping to ensure these millions of people. It's going to oh, cost yes. them a little and now, but they're hoping that that 50% of them fail to cancel and they get hit for another year. Right. So in the case of the company I went with, um, or I was given access to, they, uh, they didn't have an automatic charge because they didn't take any credit cards or anything else from me. But, I mean... A month before, and then every week thereafter. And for the last week, it was a call every day to try to get me. And I said, are you sure? Because, you know, your information was compromised, and crazy things can happen, and somebody might have nine children in your name that you would be responsible for taking care of and raising. And I was just like, I, I mean, I bought a car, and you guys didn't call me. Why on earth would I pay for this now? I mean... You're worthless, absolutely worthless. And uh, the the guy on the other end, I finally got a guy on the other end that said, yeah, let me take you off this list. We really don't do a good job. And I was just like, oh, wow, that's nice. That's, that's some honesty. Um, but, yeah, I would not buy into the fear because you're right. The companies do give this out for free or give this out at a very, very low cost, a very slashed cost. Because you can be guaranteed, you know, a fourth to a half of those people will jump at signing up for a couple of years. They'll get the super gold plan where every time you sneeze or buy a box of tissues, they'll send you an email. Do you really need to know? Well, I, 
I see it that, and I see it free advertising for these companies. And but here's here's the worst part is that they're Target, Neiman Marcus, uh, LinkedIn, or whoever, PlayStation, Sony. They're giving this out like candy, like oh here's your year, you get a year, you get a year. But look under your chair. Yeah. <laughs> You get a free year of credit monitoring services instead of we are, we're sorry that we caused you all this hassle. This is our token gift, and you want to say, you know what? Why didn't you do a little more to stop it? I don't mind paying a couple dollars more to make sure that this doesn't happen to me. And that's the problem. And yeah, there are going to be lawsuits and this and that. And it goes back to the beginning. You're not going to sign up for it because you're afraid. But I, yeah, they're going to get sued. But and they're going to say, but look, we proactively gave everyone a year. What else do you want? We can't do this forever. And you just want to say, you know what? The It's not that credit monitoring services is good or bad. It's just, why did this happen? And now other companies, you see that Target did this. There should be a conversation that says, hey, could this happen to us? Because it will happen to you. Yeah, and there's, there's no doubt about it. I mean... You know, the very best companies in the world when it comes to security, everyone gets hacked. Everyone gets hacked. You, you think about, this is probably a bad example because the security is way more lax than you could believe, but, you know, most banks, most banks that have an online portal of some sort or another, they get hacked all the time. It is actually very common for a bank to get hacked. Um, and no one says anything because it gets fixed, and you know, the bank just says, okay, we'll build it into our insurance. You know, no one cares, whatever. And I hope that this breach being public does drive other companies to start asking those questions, to start, you know, at first, getting out their pocketbooks, getting out their pocketbooks and saying, hey, you know, who can we sign? Who can we put on this security team to make sure that this is very difficult to do to us. And the very best companies when it comes to security, they get hacked. Getting hacked is just a fact of life today. Yeah, you need to keep it at bay for as long as possible. But in a sense, it's like dying, really. You know, we'll all die one day. We're all mortal. But, you know, we're going to try to stave it off for as long as possible because I don't think it's a fun experience. I've never tried it myself. Well, I mean, there's getting hacked where some a username and a salted hash of the of the passwords get out, where it takes a ridiculous amount of time to crack. Versus here, are the plain text username and the plain text passwords, and we'll figure it out. Or oh, in yes. Adobe's case, the encrypted passwords, but the plain text uh, clues. <laughs> right, right. So, if you're gonna get hacked, at least make the data bad. At least make the data almost useless to the people who are taking it from you. I'll tell you what, if my websites got hacked, they would get some usernames, they would get email addresses for the people that signed up, and they would get, you know, passwords in bcrypt, and they're kind of useless at that point. I mean, you don't... You worry about them a little bit, but you don't worry too much, you know? But I don't get how Target could let credit card numbers slip out. I mean point of sale systems were hacked. That's pretty huge. That's either very sophisticated or Target did something very stupid. And I'm hoping it's the first one, but we'll see what happens in the end. Like I said, I think at the end of the day, it's they have insurance for all this. So some so insurance picks up this and again, it it causes an inconvenience, like you said, for a week and then people forget about it. We talk about this in six months, no one's gonna remember it until the next hack goes out and we get yep. this mass hysteria and then we go two weeks it's just like the news cycle the problem is is that all these little bits of your personal information lying around if somebody then wants to go after you it's there when you see those uh, private investigated databases that they try to sell you I wouldn't be surprised if this is where they're getting some of their information from other than most yeah. of it's on there anyway I mean it's all a lot of this is public knowledge and then that's it brings up to another conversation that we need to have personal personal identifiable information shouldn't yes it's your birthday and stuff like this but this shouldn't be used for verification right so any of this it's, that got leaked shouldn't be there for people to authenticate you them as yourself or anything like that it should be yeah your social security number is the worst piece of personal identifiable information because it was just used for the government for this one thing and now people are using it for everything yeah 
So and it's it's perfectly easy. I mean, they they don't they cross it out on government forums. If you're signing a government form now, most of the time, the vast majority of the time, they do not have social security number. You know, no company, unless you're getting a background check, asks for your social security number for that reason because it is a dangerous piece of information to give out to people. And, you know, you shouldn't use your birthday as authentication. You shouldn't use your home address as authentication. Those things are easy to get. They're really, really easy to get. You can go on, like, three or four different, you know, uh, these online databases that have people listed. Yeah, I can pull up your, for $25 a day, I can pull up as much information on you and everyone you know with only a name and a state, and that's it. My students go, Mr. Cohen, why do you put your home address on Google Maps? And I say, look, I do it for me so I can navigate home. And they go, well, are you afraid that somebody's going to show up? Oh, well, yeah, look, I'm sort of afraid, but here's the thing. There's no – my address is not tied to anything other than necessarily where I live. And, yeah, we can make the point that I'm doing the wrong thing and I should obscure it and everything else. But like I said, it's for me to get home. <laughs> and, and the kids are like, well, why – you should hide that. And I go, well, look, it's it, none of that's my password. None of it holds any sensitive documents. It's all encrypted. You have to – and I'm home. So, look, they're probably right and I'm probably wrong. But, again, I'm not using personal identifiable information as means of authentication. And that's that's the bigger issue. Right. Anyway, I don't have anything else on this. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more as the as the year progresses. But there's a, a small bit of news that just dropped. Okay. Um, the Starbucks mobile application uh, was saving your password that you put into the app to log into Starbucks's website in plain text in the phone's database. So oh, gee. If, if there was a malicious application, or if you plugged your phone into a computer. It could suck all that information off and get your Starbucks password. Not the end of the world, but you might lose a couple lattes. Unless that's your password to your Dunkin' Donuts app and your right. Chipotle app. And you your... lose burritos and donuts <laughs> and burgers and anything else you use that password for. Don't share passwords. Use LastPass. And, and we keep on saying it's hard, but just think. You only have to change one password now. You just literally have to change your Starbucks password in that instead of having to change everything. Yeah, I, I love it when the breaches come out now. I'm just like, wait a minute, I have an Adobe password. Okay, last pass. Generate a new one for Adobe, and I'm done. That's it. Was your, uh, was your uh, password hint rhymes with password? <laughs> no, I, I, think, I think my password hint was last pass. Or LOL, a, one of the two. It was an A with the answer of Q. <laughs> Don't do that been. either. Or a password is password. Yeah. The, the very best thing you can do for those verification questions, lie. Make up a person in your head, be that person. Oh, no, no. I was uh, born in New York City. Yeah. But then you have to remember the lie for the rest of yeah. your life. You, you do have to remember the lie. Or... Or, better yet, and I've gotten called on this because some places their customer service representatives will ask you those questions. I was using random strings generated in the last pass for some of my answers, so I just copy and paste out of the last pass. And they said, uh, what's the name of your dog? And I said, oh, you're going to make me read this out, aren't you? And, uh, and they said... You're that guy, huh? I said, yeah, it's 64 characters and it's randomized. They said, I believe you. You're the guy. <laughs> they didn't ask me anything else. That was enough for them. See, I claim that that's now technically insecure <laughs> because they didn't make you read it. But yes. Uh, yeah. There, there was one guy. I called back uh, the next week, and there was one guy who did make me read out everything. I was like, ah, uh, he said, yeah, look, you should just change this. I said, I know, but I don't want to. And so, anyway, that's about all I've got. Yeah, so let's wrap up. It's been a great show, everybody. Let's, let's call it a night. All right, see you or guys. Until next time. Bye.